You know, it's probably he got the award uh, for the 1970s as a man uh, least likely to win a World Series title. No diminishing his uh, his skills as a player, but how he ended up with the New York Yankees in 1978 was uh, part of several machinations that took him from the uh, National League all the way through to the Oakland A's in 78 and then the Yankees. He eventually became a kind of a Dodgers role player and eventually went to Japan for one of the biggest contracts ever in Nippon uh, baseball history where he basically didn't do very well. So the legend of this guy is only known by a few because he had some fans in San Francisco. But when he ended up with the Yankees, everybody was saying, okay, who's this guy? So Gary Thomason, uh, born in San Diego, played pro baseball between 1970 and 1980, most prominently as a member of the San Francisco Giants, with whom he played for seven seasons. He also played for the Dodgers, Yankees, Mariners, Expos, and the Reds. After his Major League Baseball career, he played for the Yomiuri Giants of Japanese Nippon Pro Baseball from 81 to 82, as, again, one of the biggest contracts ever in Japan pro baseball history. Now, he was a member of the 78th World Series uh, winning squad over the Dodgers, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, when he attended Oceanside High School in Oceanside, California, he came to major prominence by numerous teams, mostly in the National League, and was drafted by the Giants in the seventh round of the 69 Major League Baseball entry draft. He made his Major League debut some three years later on September 5th, 72, at the age of 21, pinch hitting for pitcher Frank uh, Reberger in a 4-3 Giants win over the Padres. In 73, in his first full Major League season, uh, Thomason hit 285 in 112 games. Now, he was also part of the uh, the Blue Trade, which is uh, kind of a, a major change in Giants history. He was traded along with Gary Alexander, Dave Haverhill, John Henry Johnson, Phil Huffman, Alan Wirt, and 300,000 from the Giants to the A's for Vita Blue on March 1578. Mary Guerrero was eventually sent to the Athletics just over three weeks later on April 7th to complete the transaction. Now, he spent a few months in 47 games with Oakland before being traded to the Yankees for Dell Olsen, Mickey Klutz, and $50,000 on June 1578. Eight months later, he was moved again, dealt to the Dodgers by the Yuma Murray Giants. Uh, excuse me. Eight months later, he was moved again, dealt to the LA Dodgers, my apologies, for catcher Brad Goulden on February 1579, and of course with the Dodgers for two seasons. Now, Purchased from the Dodgers by the Giants uh, on December 22, 1980, he spent his final two pro seasons in Japan. Signed with great fanfare to the biggest contract ever given to a player in the Nippo League, Thomason was a disappointment in his two years in Japan, coming close to setting the league strikeout record before a knee injury and in his career. Now, Tokyo writer and conceptual artist uh, Genpai Akasukawa uh, published a book containing photographs of found objects, which he termed Hyper R. Thomason. The book enjoyed a cult following among late 1980s Japanese uh, youth. Now, I do remember the book being referenced, of all things, on the Fifth Estate, saying, uh, you know, uh, Japanese trends at the time. So, career, uh, 591 hits, 249 batting average, 61 homers, 315 RBIs, uh, excuse me, 294 RBIs, 315 uh, runs, 50 stolen bases. Now, uh, the key uh, the key ones for Thomason, again, were with San Francisco, and he put some really solid numbers in 1977. He had 17 homers and 71 RBIs, 75 bases on ball, and he hit 256 that year. Now, again, split time between uh, Oakland and uh, the Yankees in that 78 campaign, he had eight home runs, 36 RBIs, and hit um, a strong uh, 276 uh, with the Yankees. Now, the statistics for Thomason are kind of, uh, what do you call, um, don't tell the full story, and I'll give you why. He was a, a good utility player, could hit the occasional home run, was strong uh, when need be in key situations. But like I said, these years with the Giants, again, a good 250, 260 hitter wouldn't uh, strike out very often, except for that last season in 77. Uh, the stolen bases, too, in 77, picked up at 16. So where the Giants were looking at something at him to kind of do that numbers, but 
He figured this is a former Yankee, former Dodger is going to draw a lot of uh, interest. Now, uh, the of all people he's comparable to, and I kid you not, was Glenn Braggs and Leroy Stanton, if you're looking at the, the rough stats. But I, I really like Thomason as a player because I looked at the Yankees of 78, and he really, really had a strong bench. Uh, you know, when we talk about Jim Spencer, but when he had uh, uh, Doyle and Stanley and Dent in the middle infield, and he had strong, you know, outfield presence, they, they were like a solid team. They had people like Pinella and Jackson and Munson and Rivers, but they had the Royal players, and that's what uh, Thomason did. So uh, the idea is, I think what the Dodgers uh, were thinking about him was being kind of a platoon player with uh, uh, Rick Mundy or Dusty Baker, where Baker would play 110 games and Thomason would play 50 or whatever position he was in. But, I mean, the Giants contract there with Yumeri, I would figure in modern money, it would probably like $6 million, Canadian, $5 million. Anybody, any, anybody knows the final total it was... Uh, it was quite high. So that's the, the legend of the what he called the world champion by default, Gary Thomason. If you like what we're doing here with our Yankee podcast, our vintage historical ones on the 1970s role players, let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.